My name is Christy Engel. I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner. I work in the Dominican Republic in the city of La Romana through the Good Samaritan Hospital. I've been in the Dominican Republic for 10 years now, and I'll, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how I got started in nursing, uh, to become a nurse practitioner, what we're doing in the Dominican Republic, and what we've also done in Haiti following the earthquake relief. Um, when I started out, uh, I was a medical student, a pre-med student. I went to Judson College, which is a small Baptist college outside of uh, Chicago in Elgin, Illinois. And I went to that school particularly because I got a basketball scholarship. So it was an inexpensive way for me to attend a great school. I planned to go to medical school afterwards. And um, when I graduated a little bit early, I had the chance to do a missions trip. So I went to uh, Haiti for three weeks. Um, believing that after I would get back from Haiti, I'd find out which medical school I had gotten into. And uh, I went to Haiti uh, with the understanding, too, that I would, once I got into medical school, I was going to be studying orthopedic surgery and sports medicine and working with athletes for the rest of my life. And uh, went to Haiti uh, right after the coup in 1991 for the first time. And every other person who was planning on going on that trip with me had canceled because of the coup, and I decided to still go. We flew over in a small five-seater plane, and when we um, landed, we had to clear the goats and the bikes and the cows off the runway, and um, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. I'd never been overseas, and so we got off the plane, and literally the, the smell and the um, heat of Haiti hit me in the face. I looked out as we stepped off the plane, and there was a, a chain-link fence surrounding the airfield, and there were hundreds of people standing at the chain-link fence to see who was getting off the plane, and I can remember as I stepped off the plane full in the face with all this the smells and the heat um, I realized I had this overwhelming feeling of, of coming home and uh, realized in that moment that uh, my my idea of what I was going to do with my life had really changed and I was going to end up working in missions for the rest of my life uh, I spent three weeks working in Haiti and really had that confirmed for myself went back to the United States with the full expectation that I would be going into medical school I got back and all of my letters had said that my applications were incomplete and found out later that um, my undergrad school had put a $5 charge on my account and refused to send out my transcripts. Later found out this $5 charge was put onto several students' accounts and um, many students who had already, it, it was a computer glitch. And so despite contacting all of the medical schools and telling them what had happened, uh, I had no um, chance of getting into medical school that next year. So I had another year off, and I went back to Iowa, where my mother lived, and raised funds to be able to go back to Haiti for a year. And I spent a year working in Haiti at the Good Samaritan Hospital in Haiti, in the northern part of Haiti, learned Creole, and also started learning all the different things that I could do in, in medicine and what skills um, I needed to do uh, the job well. Worked with a lot of Quashia Core, which is a protein malnutrition, uh, typhoid, malaria, uh, dengue fever, anthrax, um, all kinds of trauma injuries. They taught me how to suture, how to set fractures um, that year. And this is before any nursing or medical training. Um, I was in charge of putting all of the femur fractures um, in traction and keeping them in traction for six weeks. I did um, a lot of the suturing when we had um, trauma accidents come in, bus accidents or something like that. We were woken up at all hours of the night to go in and do that kind of work. And then um, at the end of the year, I had refilled out all my applications and, and tried to get into medical school once again, and I was again denied. Um, I actually had interviews that year, and one of the schools said, you are exactly who we want to have in our school, but unfortunately we need you to have your MCAT score up one half of a point. And I asked to be put on probation, and they said no. And so um, I, was, I decided to take a year off and study and retake the MCAT. Spent the entire year studying and retaking the MCAT, worked in a billing office at a hospital, not too exciting. And when I got finished with that, um, the night before my MCAT exam, I was I decided to check all of my paperwork and make sure I knew exactly where I was going. I was very well prepared for the test. And uh, looked at my paperwork and realized I had written the date down wrong on my calendar and I missed the MCAT test by a week. And so I really had no idea what I was supposed to do. Um, I knew I was supposed to do medical missions. I knew I was supposed to uh, 
work overseas, I knew I was supposed to be a doctor. That's all I knew. And um, yet I couldn't get into medical school. And so I can remember sitting on my couch that night and, and um, my roommate came home and she wondered why I was still up. Uh, I should be in bed getting ready for the test the next day and I told her what had happened and her grandparents were with her and they sat down with me and talked with me and prayed with me and then in the end uh, said, well, where, where's the school that you want to go to? And I said, University of Missouri. And they said, well, what else can you do to get into the medical school? And so we decided that uh, the nursing program would be a good way for me to get into the school, to meet professors, and, and potentially have a way into the medical school. So I went to the University of Missouri, interviewed, and they accepted me on the spot into their nursing program. Um, it was a fairly prestigious program. There, were, it's I think number 16 in the country at the time that I went to it, and um, so did very well through nursing school straight A's and despite two other students uh, getting into medical school doing the same thing that I was trying to do I never did. Um, so I believed by the end of that time that I was never supposed to go to medical school that I was just supposed to do nursing and kind of really um, um, took that in and, and owned that. Um, returned to Haiti at the end of my nursing career or nursing uh, education and um, I had done my practicum in the pediatric intensive care unit and despite uh, only having a few months experience in the pediatric intensive care, when I moved to Haiti, I was immediately put in charge of their pediatric ward. And I was in charge of all of the admissions and discharges and the ongoing care of all children in their pediatric ward. The first year that I was in Haiti working, we had uh, 500 admissions. And of those 500, I had 105 die. Uh, so we had a 20% mortality rate in the pediatric ward, and they were dying of everything, um, not any one disease. We had meningococcal meningitis outbreak that wiped out uh, probably a dozen kids over several weeks. We had um, malaria, typhoid. Um, we had the kwashiorkor. The kwashiorkor was pretty prominent, um, the protein malnutrition, and kids would just get such low hemoglobin levels um, and such low protein levels that they would uh, third space and they would start swelling and then they would their skin would break down and as their skin broke down they became much more susceptible to other infections and so we um, worked with those kids and tried to get them eating again many times was, those children did not want to eat and so we had to encourage them to start eating we also had neonatal tetanus vaccinations were um, not very prominent in that country and so we'd have children that were born with um, a tetanus and none of the children that were born with tetanus ever survived because we could not intubate them like we could in the U.S. And so the children would basically be in, an, in a continuous seizure until their body just wore out. And it usually lasted about uh, 30 days. Um, so that was very difficult. We saw other children with other diseases that are, we vaccinate for in the United States, like diphtheria. Um, and children would die of diphtheria. It's a horrible, horrible way to die. Um, I'm very pro-vaccine because I've seen what happens to children who die of diseases that they're not vaccinated against that could have been prevented. Um, then we also had lots of traumas and injuries. I worked in a, um, a surgical, I ran all the surgical teams that also came down and helped them with their uh, cases. I would do all the screenings for the cases before they got to, uh, to Haiti to work with us. And then we would do surgery for a week or two and, and see many, many cases of orthopedic surgeries or um, um, general surgery cases. I worked in the medical clinic as well and saw the outpatients. We saw about 500 people a day in our outpatient clinic. So on the days that I had to do the outpatient clinic and the inpatient clinic, um, I it was very, very busy. I worked in the pharmacy part-time as well. And um, in all of this, I, what I found that nursing did for me as opposed to medicine was that nursing allowed me to be a lot more flexible in what I was able to do. In my nursing education, I learned a lot about um, sociology and, and theory and looking at the whole person, how do you heal the whole person? And I found that um, that's, those skills really, really helped me to be flexible in moving from um, one day delivering babies to the next day setting femur fractures to the next day suturing or the next day helping a child with a feeding program. And so we were really able to be much more flexible. I found that as physicians, when they would come in and work with us, uh, physicians were really expected to see patients, period. And uh, nurses could do a lot of the social service issues uh, surrounding patient care in a, in a country like Haiti. I worked there for about um, uh, three years altogether. Uh, the last time I was there was 18 months long, and um, that was after I finished nursing school. Uh, I got very sick at one point uh, towards the end of that 18 months, uh, almost died, 
and uh, realized that I was still supposed to be in missions, um, but this was not really the right place for me. And not because I almost got, died, but it was uh, I was looking for a community of people. One of the one of the things that I really believe in in nursing care, um, or at least in nursing and missions, is that we need to build on relationships. Um, we have to have a relationship with the community in which we're working, and then we also have to have a really good relationship with the people that we're working that are working along our si alongside us. Without that relationship, that good working relationship, um, and that without a relationship with the community that you're serving, um, nothing will really change. Um, it will change for the moment that you're putting all your efforts and your money and your time into something, but beyond that, you will always lack um, um, the uh, investment of the community, investment of your of your coworkers, to really care about you, that you get are doing the best job that you can, that you're getting the rest that you need. One of the the greatest things um, that missionaries I think fight is, or people who work in relief work overseas, is um, exhaustion. Um, there will never be a time that everything has been done. Um, there will always be something more that you can do, and you need to need to very quickly learn how to take time to rest. Uh, I think that's probably very true in medicine and nursing in the United States as well. Unless you are very proactive, nobody will tell you to take a break. Nobody will tell you you need to rest some, and so you keep working hard. Um, so I would really encourage people to, um, whether they're in relief work and overseas or they're doing things here in the States, um, to be very careful about how much time you're taking to rest. It, it'll change um, your abilities to be able to keep going e each day, and you won't burn out, and a lot of people do burn out. Um, after I left Haiti, um, I spent a year trying to figure out um, what, what mission agency I would work with. I had been independent in Haiti. And so I discovered uh, that I had, I had strong connections with the American Baptist churches. And so I went to um, the American, I interviewed with the American Baptist and it was again um, um, offered a position immediately through International Ministries. When they offered me my position um, as a pediatric nurse, uh, I was offered anywhere in the world. They said they told me different places, Thailand and Laos and Cambodia. They offered me um, different South America or South Africa. I could work there. Different places um, in Central America, Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And each one of those places I said no to. I had very good friends in the Congo and I wanted to go work in the Congo. And most people thought I was crazy being a, a single woman. Um, going to work in the Congo was probably not the safest thing for me to do. But uh, because of my friendships uh, of other physicians that I knew in that area, I really wanted to go work with them. And so we set about getting my um, visa, uh, yellow fever vaccines, and all the vaccines that I needed to go to work in Congo and starting to arrange my um, language school that I was probably gonna go to in Belgium. From that point, um, I had several months before I could actually go anywhere, and they asked me to, to head down to the Dominican Republic, if I would, and make an evaluation of the medical work that was happening in the Dominican Republic. So I moved to the, I went down for two months and to start my evaluation and very quickly found that my skills in nursing and my skills um, from based on what I had done in Haiti were very much needed in the Dominican Republic. Um, the site where we were working at in La Romana was a site that, that ministered to Haitians, Haitian immigrants. They were living on in villages called Bates, and a Bates is a sugar cane cutter village. And in these villages, they could be anywhere from 200 to two or 3,000 people living there, and there were 120 of these villages within an hour's drive of La Romana. And the hospital, the Good Samaritan Hospital in La Romana, was trying to go out and do mobile medical clinics in each of these villages uh, on a daily basis with American teams that would come down and work with them. And so I found that they need, really needed somebody to help coordinate their work. And about two weeks into my two months, they offered me a position there and asked that I would be the person to go there instead of the Congo and continue to, to think about it, pray about it, and, and seek counsel on it, and eventually ended up in the Dominican Republic.